I was sitting at the computer and I was, I think I was working on homework and suddenly it felt like a bolt of lightning struck my body. The very top crown of my head, it was like a spark went off and it rippled through my core down to my toes, made my whole body numb, then tingly. And then right afterwards, an extremely rapid heartbeat. It was as if I had been running for three hours. I suddenly felt exhausted. I couldn't catch my breath and my heart rate just kept increasing. I thought I was dying. Welcome to the Holistic Life Navigation Podcast, where we explore life through the lens of somatics. I'm Luis Mujica, a somatic educator who teaches people how to find safety in themselves. Your turn to learn begins now. Panic attacks are some of the most common experiences that propel someone into therapy, into even uncovering um, repressed memory and traumas that they didn't know that were living in their bodies. And I know this was the case for me. When I was 16, I experienced the most terrifying moment of my life. I was sitting at the computer and I was, I think I was working on homework. And suddenly it felt like a bolt of lightning struck my body. The very top crown of my head, it was like a spark went off and it rippled through my core down to my toes, made my whole body numb, then tingly. And then right afterwards, an extremely rapid heartbeat. It was as if I had been running for three hours. I suddenly felt exhausted. I couldn't catch my breath and my heart rate just kept increasing. I thought I was dying. I ran out of the room. I went to my mom and dad. I said, I don't know what's happening. My body is like freaking out. And they said, it sounds like a panic attack. Just kind of let's settle here and sit with it. And for weeks, I stayed in that state. What my memory tells me, it was about a month. I went to all these different doctors. I, I did CAT scans. I did MRIs. I did stress tests. I did, went to a cardiologist had blood tests taken. I went to everyone I could imagine. I was even hospitalized for it uh, for a very short stint and nothing came back. Everything was positive or not positive, like a, a finding, but there was nothing wrong with my body. My brain was healthy, my kidneys, my liver, my heart, my blood work was great. Everything was great. I was this healthy 16 year old on paper I mean, interestingly enough, those of you who know my story, I had chronic illness through most of my childhood. And it wasn't until I was 16, I discovered whole food nutrition and herbs and even supplements at the time that started to heal long-term serious chronic conditions, things like asthma that I, I couldn't even breathe unless I was on a nebulizer machine twice a day and took an inhaler. So this is one of many. So what was interesting was for the first time in my life, I wasn't sick anymore. I was actually healthy and what was happening to my body? Why did I feel so horrible? It was shocking. The healthier I ate, the worse I got. Now I would come to learn that some of the things I was considering healthy, which they are in a lot of ways, were also really detoxifying. And food that's too cleansing and detoxifying is also really activating of your adrenaline. And I had PTSD, I have Tourette's syndrome and nervous tics. And so my body was already filled with electricity by the age of 16 from many different things I had gone through by that point, but the electricity had nowhere to go. And so the stimulation from this cleansing diet I was on just made more electricity. So the diet wasn't necessarily grounding, it was detoxifying and it healed me of a lot of things, but I wasn't still nourishing my adrenals. I wouldn't learn how to do that for another decade. So here I am, 16, one month of tests, one month of uh, horrible insomnia, not being able to sleep, constant panic, constant feeling of heart, heart pain, which was really just chest muscle pain. I was having a month-long panic attack. And that would start a, a trend for me for a couple of years of just suddenly going into panic attacks. I lived in New York City, and a few times I was rushed to the hospital because I passed out in the street from a panic attack. So over the years, I didn't really know what these were. I mean, I knew they were panic attacks, but they seemed much more mysterious. I was always healthy when they did my blood work and when they did tests on me. That's when I still had insurance. So this got me so interested in what was happening in my body. It always felt like electricity. It always felt like my body was about to break open. After studying somatic psychology, getting trained in somatic experiencing, and then working and teaching as a somatic therapist for I don't know how many years now, eight, eight years now, 
I really started to, I, I understand now more than ever what a panic attack is, how to work with it, and how to even prevent them. So a panic attack is essentially when your vagus nerve, this large rope-like nerve that runs through your core and attaches little branches attached to all your different systems and body parts, when that nerve gets so overwhelmed with neurotransmission, electricity. This is why I say trauma is like a kiss, an electric kiss from the goddess, because it electrifies when you have a trauma response, when you're highly stimulated or a big sensational event happens, it electrifies your system. And that electricity overwhelms certain systems and organs and body parts. And we feel that sensationally. A panic attack is when your body is at the edge. It can't tolerate any more charge. So it has a huge response where the system goes into overload. Your breathing can get labored. You can feel really nauseous. You can throw up. If you're like me, you'll pass out because your system literally can't even be conscious anymore. It's too much, too much work. Uh, your heart rate will increase. You'll get flushed. Sometimes you'll get numb. I, I often wouldn't be able to feel my lips when it was happening. It is a biological terror when this occurs. It isn't just like in my mind, I'm panicking. My physical system is panicking. My biology is panicking. What's interesting about a, a panic attack is they tend to occur in people who aren't very embodied, meaning people that don't feel their body fluidly throughout the day. I was this person for a long time. And what I discovered as I became more embodied was how my physical body would show me signs that would prevent panic attacks. One of the simplest signs for me that I've learned are my shoulders. The moment these shoulders start going up a little bit, like in conversation, while I'm driving, while I'm typing, while I'm teaching, that's a sign that my body's going into a fear response. It's a freeze. It's curling up to not be seen. I was born as an intersex man, so I was dominated by estrogen until I was 15. I developed breasts because of that. And because of having breasts, I was bullied. I was sexually assaulted several times, and I had a really low self-worth. I didn't want anyone to know I had breasts because every time they did, something bad happened to my body. So I learned to curl up and hide. These shoulders have a history. Hundreds of thousands of times they have practiced curling up and finding safety because effective curling up effectively allowed me to hide my breasts and pass and get through life without too much turmoil after years of turmoil from not knowing how to hide them. So to this day, when I start to feel overwhelmed relationally, especially with other people, my shoulders will go up. Now, before I was embodied to that, I didn't know that was happening. So I was living with my shoulders up to my ears for years, which meant my breathing was affected. My chest was constricted. My heartbeat would increase. All this biology of activation would, would occur just from my shoulders being stuck like that. And eventually it would turn into a migraine and or a panic attack. Now, if I feel them starting to go up, I know how to bring them down and find safety in my belly and look around the room I'm in and let my whole system regulate to the fact that right now it's safe. It's just simply remembering something painful or expecting something painful. So when you learn how to feel those subtle signs, those whispers from the body sensationally, you start getting clues that your body is on the way to overwhelm before you actually tip over into a straight up panic attack. So I'm going to lead you in a little exercise here for any of you that experience panic attacks or any of you listening to this now that just have stress. And what you're going to find interesting is you may even be very embodied. You can be the most embodied person in the world, if that's even a thing. But it doesn't matter because there's always parts of your body you can't feel until you're taken into an exercise like this. So for this to work really well, I want you to sit somewhere or lay somewhere where your head can be supported. So you're going to hear me pull up my own headrest. There it is. I'm going to lay my head back. Ah. Oh. And just let my body be held for a moment. If you need time to do this, pause this and go take some time to do this and then come back. The reason we want to be held, I'm coming up from being held so I can teach this. The reason we want to be held is we want to notice where constriction lives inside of us. When you're holding yourself up, you are naturally constricting to hold yourself up. It's just part of the physiology of posture and movement. When you don't have to hold yourself up anymore, you're much more aware of constriction. 
And constriction is how the body shows us it's holding on to something, whether it's storing a painful event, whether it's protecting itself against something, or if it's just expecting stress, right? It will constrict. So whether you know the context or why, it doesn't matter. Constriction is how your body protects itself and shows you it's holding stress. So as you lay here, notice what parts of the body aren't allowing themselves to ease into the support. It could be your face muscles, it could be your jaw, it could be your teeth, your teeth could be clenched. It can be your shoulders. Often it's in the belly, the pelvic area, the genitals and the sexual organs are often very clenched. It could be your toes curling up, your fingers, just really notice what parts are constricted. And some of you might find that head to toe, there's just constriction everywhere. So if that's the case, just pick one place right now to be with one place that feels constricted. And we're not trying to open it. We're just noticing there's constriction here and take a moment to be with it. It really helps to place your hand wherever that is. And remember that gives us separation. It says, oh, there's a constriction in my chest rather than I'm constricted. Oh, there's anxiety in my chest rather than I'm anxious. If I'm anxious, if I identify with this little space in my chest, I become that. My whole being becomes that. And there's no way out. And that will lead to panic. If I can notice my conscious mind and other parts of me aren't feeling this because my hand is holding the one place that is, it opens me up to the resourcing of many parts of me aren't constricted, right? Or if they are, my conscious mind isn't. There's a consciousness that's with the constriction rather than I'm stuck with it alone. So witness your own constriction and see how it responds to just being felt by you, just being touched, being breathed into, and being noticed. Give it a minute. And you can pause this if you need extra time. I'm going to pause for 30 seconds. Let's just feel how this place responds to your touch and attention. Is it softening? Is it getting bigger? Is it getting numb? You might want to open your eyes and look around the room. If you get a little dissociated, that can help. And either way, that's our next step. As we hold this place, regardless of how it responds to us being with it, we want to look around the room as if we're introducing this place to the room. And specifically, as you look around the room, really get your head and neck involved. Turn them all around. Look behind you, look above you, look below you. And just focus on one thing, one thing only that's really pleasant. A beautiful painting, the way the light's pouring in. Maybe you smell something delicious. A plant, a person, an animal, something. Whatever that thing is, let that place you're holding, that place with constriction, just feel that. Can it feel this thing? If so, pause and enjoy that, see what it does. If not, or in addition, what part of you can? So if your hand's on your chest, let's say, because your chest is constricted, what part of me feels this beautiful thing in the room, room I'm looking at? Let's say, oh, my stomach gets really soft because it likes that. Excellent. Let the stomach be part of the conversation. The stomach that's relaxed can be with the part in the chest that's constricted. This practice, as simple as it seems, starts to help you identify the early stages, the early signals of stress in the body just by noticing constriction and then being with the constriction so it's not alone or unconscious and essentially abandoned and letting it see parts of the room and environment around you that are safe, that are enjoyable, that are beautiful. And eventually that constriction will ease because it will notice I don't have to protect myself right now. I might have to in three days or two hours, but right now I don't have to. And in that release of right now, I don't have to protect myself. You have just prevented a panic attack because your body starts to ease that constriction, which releases that stored charge in there, fear. Your body can metabolize that, soak it up. And then it's not at a level 10. Maybe it went down to a level two. It's like taking a lid off of a boiling pot of water. The steam comes out, the boiling settles down. That's what happens in our bodies when we do these small, short embodiment practices. So try this every day. 
Notice how your body responds to things differently when you practice this each day. Notice if your panic attacks get less severe or less consistent or go away altogether. Let us know. Write to info at holisticlifenavigation.com with your questions, your comments, or let me know in the actual review and the, what's it called? I guess just it's a review. You can leave a comment in the review for this podcast and let me know what this was like for you, where this took you and what you're learning from this work. That's the end of today's episode. Now let's take a moment to notice where we feel the episode in our bodies. Close your eyes. Take a breath. And let whatever wants to come up, come up. And remember, those sensations hold the wisdom that we're looking for. If you want to go deeper, visit holisticlifenavigation.com. 